Hello and welcome to News Today on IFN TV. My name is Serafina Deidu. Now the headlines. Delegates from Nigeria and Ghana meet in Accra for the seventh section of the Permanent Joint Commission for Cooperation. The International Student Association of Zenith University College Accra, Ghana celebrates Cultural Night, tagged Beauty of Africa. The South South Nigerian community in Ghana inaugurates newly elected executives. Logos Rema Foundation announces 96 hours of praise and worship. We'll also be taking a look at the sales and consumption of coconuts in Ghana with Chidi Maugo. And on sports today, we'll be hearing from one of Ghana's and Africa's most traveled professional soccer player, Sharif Din. I am Mark Yodo. All this and more after the break. Stay tuned. Now the news in detail. The seventh section of the Nigeria-Ghana Joint Commission for Cooperation has ended in the Ghanaian capital, Accra. The event, which was held from the 18th to 20th of October 2017, was to discuss partnership between both countries. During the section, both countries pledged their commitment towards mutual beneficial partnership in seven broad areas spanning across finance, defense, security, trade and investment, legal and territorial administration. The growing relationship between the two countries also triggered discussion on partnership and cooperation in the areas of social development, energy and petroleum, agriculture as well as communication and transportation. The conference had in attendance the Nigerian High Commissioner to Ghana, His Excellency Ambassador Lufemi Michael Abikoye, Albert Yanke, Director of the Ghana Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, and Her Excellency Buka Ibrahim, Honorable Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Federal Republic of Nigeria, who headed the Nigerian delegation at the event. It was a very friendly environment, and I'm very sure at the end of it, by the time we sign some of those MOU, both countries will be better for it. That will help us to deepen our cooperation, that will help us to collaborate more, that will help us to be able to understand ourselves better. As we speak right now, we are even discussing how to uh, prevent traffickers from sending our nationals to the Gulf regions where they go through very uh, horrible experiences sometimes. The International Student Association of Zenith University College, Accra, Ghana, on Saturday, 21st October 2017, celebrated our annual cultural night tagged the beauty of Africa. <laughs> The celebration featured cultural display from students from different African countries such as Chad, Nigeria, Mali and Gabon representing different tribes. The event had in attendance the Ezendigo in Ghana, Eze Dr. Ambassador Chooks Ihene to, to honor the Igbo community students. <laughs> African emancipation can only be a success when we are able to stand together as one, notwithstanding our cultural differences. So it is very necessary that we see strength in diversity rather than fight on wars. I believe if um, we see more of these kind of things, it will refresh our memory back that there's no place like home. We are Africans and we are great Africans. The charge is for you to work hard. The charge is for you to know the reason why you are here. The charge is for you to know that it's in your hands that Africa can change. 
if you don't think about this, if you don't remember this, you cannot get there. And you know, when youths are growing, they don't think about these things. They think, uh, they think I mean, they can, they can only say, hey, I'm a young guy, I have a long way to go. There's no long way to go. The South-South Nigeria community in Ghana on Saturday, 21st October 2017, inaugurated some of our newly elected members into several executive offices. Mr. Anthony Udevo, who was elected and inaugurated as the executive president of the community, called on all members of the association to unite and build a strong organization for the interests of the Nigerian citizen from Edo, Delta, Rivers, Akwaibom, Bayalsa, and Cross River State residing in Ghana. The event had in attendance president of the Nigerian Women Association in Ghana, Mrs. Oscar Ugo, former president of the Igbo community in Ghana, Chief Uche Ayogu, and Pastor Jude Odom of Hallowed Chapel, among others. I want us to come together, and moreover, too, if you are building a house, it's not only one block that builds a house, it's a collection of different blocks that makes a house. So here, the new, if the new uh, elected executive, they should cooperate with the president so that South South can be a one united body. I've just been sworn in as the South South Community President of Ghana. I'm so delighted to occupy this position because I have been a pioneer of this association for the past six years. We've been trying to make sure we bring our people on board so that we can portray who we are in Ghana. I feel very great being part of this community. I think it's a very good step the leadership have taken. This effort will further unite um, the people of the South South because um, we have realized there is, there is strength in unity. The elected executive, they are South South lovers and they have actually paid a price to get to this uh, uh, super platform. I know they can do better. I believe uh, there is no query against anyone that is in the executive. The Logos Rema Foundation has launched its 2017 edition of 96 Hours of Praise and Worship. The event, which is scheduled to commence from the 8th through the 12th of November 2017, is expected to hold daily at the premises of the church. The head pastor of the church, Reverend Dr. Abu Bako, in his address referred to the event as a revival, recovery and restoration of the Tabernacle of David, and is said to bring a wave of revival and restoration to the African continent now declare the 96 hours non-stop praise and worship 2017 edition officially launched. So what we're doing is as a precursor to your acquiring the habit of praise and worship as an individual, you also would then be helped by being brought into the atmosphere of praise and worship. So for the last 15 years, we have done 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, now 96 hours, second edition, going to third. Why? Because we believe that it is time for Africa to be soaked with praise and worship. And now a short version of our featured news documentary on coconut sales and consumption in Ghana with IFN TV's Chidi Maugu. My name is Shirima. I've been across Ghana finding out what is so special about coconut sales and consumption in Ghana. Why do most people prefer the pure coconut water as opposed to some bottled soft drinks? Enjoy the documentary. Coconut, a tropical fruit, believed to have been introduced to Africa by ancient Portuguese traders, is one of Ghana's favorite. It is not just consumed as food. It is a real source of happiness as it has made a lot of people richer and economically better off. Almost every street in Accra has a coconut salesman and of course, a customer. The coconut tree, popularly called the tree of life, has been found to thrive on the beach, 
where other plants dare not grow. This alone places a lot of importance on coconut, also known as kube, in tree. Coconut farming has been reported to come second after cocoa in Ghana. Mega Farms and Green Coast Group Consult, Ghana's leading coconut advocate, has over the years employed labor and of course positively affected the economy. Mosquito quail, fertilizer. Yes, I won't go in a Yama, Wakuma, and no hurt. And early in the morning, so on my bois. Send a bear home with you. Some sick a Yarigo monument to move a few of them. Say a good sell Benugu de Via. It has been proven that everything from the coconut tree is useful, from the leaves down to the roots. Craftsmen have turned this usefulness to their advantage in making basket, hat, earrings, and bracelets. The oil is used as skin softener, hair moisturizer, and it has been discovered to be highly medicinal. And on Sports Today, we'll be hearing from one of Ghana's and Africa's most traveled professional soccer player, Sharif Din. I am Mark Yodo. I started my career in Midland FC, based in Ghana, collaborated with Midland in Denmark. Uh, that's my youth team that I started with, and from there, I think I have about three, four seasons with them. And I was loaned to Accra House of Oak. That's my first Premier League that I, I started playing in Ghana before traveling to Europe and taste my professional career in Europe football again. Uh, it was great experience because playing in Europe is, is the best thing that I think every professional footballer wants to have in his career. The facilities, everything is different compared. Uh, after my loan spell in Midland in Denmark, another team again, that's AGF, Arrows Gymnastic Ferros also, shown an interest in me for me to help them. So for them too, it was a loan spell again because my club refused to give, me, like give it to them as an outright contract or something. So I play another one season again with them before coming back to Ghana and join Accra Great Olympics. Uh, it was a great performance, but I was still young by then. I think my managers in Ghana they were having a huge plan for me, so everything based on them, I don't have the choice than to follow what they said. The difference is far, far, because I think being a mature player started all in Denmark when I was loaned to a Denmark club, Danish club, because the experience, I gained most experience because I was with the big players in Denmark and stuff, so the experience is far, far different from Ghana. I had a good season in Israel. That made me to have an opportunity to sign for Hansi Makashkala in Russia. But due to the negotiation and like I said, from, uh, with Hansi and my club in 
Ghana, my managers, like the deal didn't come on, so I have to come back and play for Riyadh Tamale United for one season again. Uh, because they were trying to qualify for the AFC Champions League, so they gave me the chance to come and help them. And God be so good too, I had a good season and I was I joined the best top scorer in the season. Uh, my mom and dad are Nigerians, but I was born in Ghana, bred in Ghana. I have never been to Nigeria like to stay. I only been to Nigeria like as a transit or something. Even though I'm a Ghanaian, but uh, uh, I'm also a Nigeria. As I say, I'm a dual citizen guy. So if the chance comes, I can't turn down the offer than to grab it. It's been a wonderful opportunity to have you on IFN TV News today. I'm Serafina Dedu. Bye.